Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological horror film, Flowers in the Attic. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a family of six living happily in their abode. The four children, Chris, Kathy, and the twins, always surprise their father whenever he comes home from his business trips. One night, while the other children are asleep, the father visits Kathy's room to prevent them from being jealous, for he bought a jewelry box with installed music since Kathy loves dancing. Then one unfortunate day, their family prepares a birthday celebration for the father once he arrives. The doorbell rings, and what they see are police officers instead, informing Corinne, their mother, that the father had died from an incident. The family of five is now forced to sell everything to survive, and Corinne has no choice but to return to her wealthy parents, who disowned and disinherited her for an unknown reason. So Corinne takes the train at night with her children to her parents' grand manor, called Foxworth's Hall. En route, Corinne promises her children that she plans to win back their grandfather's love to return the intended inheritance for her, so her children can have all the riches in the world to make their dreams come true. The following day, Kathy shares with Chris that she never cares about their grandparents' wealth, but only wants to be in their old house with memories of their father. They arrive in Foxworth's hall soon, and the butler nonchalantly welcomes them at the doorstep. Corinne introduces the four children, but the butler remains unbothered and quiet. They enter the grand hall, and Corinne meets her mother, who's strictly poised, puritanical, and cold towards her daughter and her grandchildren. The grandma then orders the butler to bring the family's baggage, while the rest follow her to a room on the third floor. Upon arriving in the bedroom, the grandma immediately assigns the children's bed by gender. So Chris shall share one bed with the twin boy, while Kathy shares the other with the twin girl. The grandma cautions them to abide by her house rules, such as no whining, crying, running, shouting, or leaving the room. Apparently, the grandma always carries the Bible wherever she goes. Before Corinne leaves, she emotionally advises her children to behave and obey their grandma, so she doesn't have to punish them. Corinne and the grandma leave the children's bedroom locked from the outside to prevent them from escaping. Chris maintains his positive outlook, assuring his siblings that their grandma isn't mean as they seem. But when he opens the curtains, they only see barred windows. The following day, the grandma brings food for the children, including sandwiches, fried chickens, a pitcher of milk and juice, and four powder sugar cookies. The grandma then reveals with the four children that they removed Corinne from the will because she married her father's half-brother. The four children are products of incest, which makes Corinne's first marriage unholy. The grandma disgustedly calls the four children the devil's spawn and that the grandfather knows nothing about the four children's existences, so they need to hide in the room while he's still alive. At night, Kathy displays the music box in their bedroom, when suddenly Corinne visits them along with the grandma. The grandma forces her to show them her 17 lashes on the back, as punishment for each year she lived in sin from the incest with their father. The grandma tells them that she can give the four children food and shelter, but never love and kindness. Afterward, Chris cleans his mother's wound lashes on her back, and Corinne tells them that the years of happiness she had with their father are worth a hundred whippings. The grandfather is unaware of their existence, so Corinne still has a chance to regain her inheritance from her father's fortune when he dies soon. Afterward, Corinne tells Chris and Kathy about the secret narrow stairway, leading to an attic in their closet for them to create the twins' plenarum. Afterward, Corinne leaves them alone, while Chris and Kathy change into their sleeping clothes. For Chris, their mother is just sad, but for Kathy, their mother is starting to change differently. The twins sleep in the same bed, making Kathy and Chris share another. The following day, the grandma brings the same set of meals to the children. The moment she leaves, the children grab food and open the secret panel on the way to the attic, when suddenly, the grandma returns and warns them not to get caught. The days become weeks and weeks become months, and the four children fight against boredom and confinement. Kathy dresses up in gowns and dances in front of the mirror. Chris reads books for he dreams of becoming a doctor, and the twins make paper flowers to decorate the attic. Their only contact with air and sunlight is through a barred window. Meanwhile, Corinne continues to win back her father's love, to the extent that her visits to the children become seldom to never. The children think something wrong must have happened to their mother, so they begin planning an escape route to sneak past their grandma. In the attic, the twins wonder when they can play and enjoy outdoors, but Kathy and Chris comfort them with a quote from the Bible that they need to be patient and sacrifice, so their mother can achieve their main plan. Later, Chris washes Kathy's back in the bathtub, 
and they wonder if their mother must have been locked up by their grandma, so she can never see them again. The following day, the grandma brings the same set of meals, but upon arriving in the room, she catches Kathy and Chris sleeping in the same bed, and assumes they're having an affair. So to punish them, the grandma destroys Kathy's jewelry box, causing Kathy to break down. It's night, and Kathy and Chris remove the loose bar in the attic's window to search for their mother. They climb to the rooftop and use a rope to rappel down, but a housekeeper opens the roof's lights and dogs bark at them, so they climb up again. However, rain pours down, making the roof slippery and the rope to snap, causing Chris to slip off the roof. The housekeeper almost catches them, but Chris manages to climb back up in time. The following day, Corrine in a beautiful dress visits the children, and the twins are delighted by her presence, while Kathy and Chris confront their mother instead. Kathy protests that the twins need time outside to be healthy again, but Corrine insists their attempt to escape almost ruined her plan. Corrine adds that they have a choice, to leave and have nothing, or stay a little longer for the grandfather's new will, so they can have all the riches, since their grandfather only has less than a month to live. Chris sides with his mother, while Kathy walks away. Meanwhile, the twin boy obtains a pet mouse, and the attic's window is securely barred again. Once again, the grandma discovers Chris chatting with Kathy Bear in a bathtub, and calls them sinners. Chris then angrily chases her away for antagonizing their innocent chattery. At night, the twin boy goes to the attic to feed the mouse, causing his siblings to panic, because they think the brother is missing. Fortunately, they eventually find him sleeping in a basket with the mouse in his hand, because it escaped from its cage. Kathy then returns to their bedroom, but the grandma corners her, locks Chris in their closet, and then mercilessly chops Kathy's beautiful long hair. The closet door eventually opens, and Chris finds Kathy crying in the bathroom with a ragged hairstyle. So he restyles her hair, while Kathy angrily confesses her hatred to their mother for abandoning them. For weeks, the four children suffer from starvation due to their grandma's punishment. They turn pale, sick, and thin, especially the twin boy. So Chris cuts himself and feeds him his blood to battle hunger. Afterward, Chris removes the bedroom's door hinges, so they can occasionally sneak out. During their forbidden expedition, they find their mother's grand bedroom filled with fancy jewelry. Chris calms Kathy, saying that their mother must have an explanation for hiding all the wealth from them. Then they see the grandfather sleeping in his bedroom, whom they assume is dead, so they approach him. But suddenly, the grandfather hugs them both and mistakes Kathy for Corrine. Kathy screams and runs away with Chris to return to their bedroom, but the butler catches and effortlessly follows them. The two siblings return to their bedroom in time and catch their breath in the bathroom. Kathy then asks Chris what he thinks of their mother after seeing her luxurious room. Unfortunately, Chris continues to defend their mother, while Kathy curses upon their mother's betrayal. Desperate to leave, Kathy convinces Chris to escape and live on their own, because their mother has become obsessed with money. But Chris doubts his capability to support them and still trusts their mother. The following day, the four children finally get to eat the same meal again. Months passed, and it's finally winter. The four children gather in the attic, and the twins are severely sick with evident symptoms. Suddenly, Corrine visits them bearing good news. The grandfather's lawyer will finally include Corrine in the grandfather's will tomorrow. And tonight, there's an organized party dedicated to Corrine, as they reintroduce her to the society. Despite the purposely good news, Kathy and Chris furiously confront their mother for the neglect of her duties. The children treat the attic as a prison now, and no amount of gifts can suffice the days that she abandoned them. Chris reminds his mother of his unconditional love for her, and Kathy is only fighting for their right to have a peaceful life with their mother. However, Corrine thinks that they're disrespecting her. So she emotionally walks out, despite knowing her children's hardships and illness. Once again, Chris and Kathy sneak out and see their mother enjoying the party with her fiancé, the same lawyer. Upon seeing such betrayal, Chris breaks down and hugs Kathy in the attic. The following day, the grandma finds the children gathering around a severely ill twin boy. So she instructs Corrine, who coldly approaches her children, to bring the twin boy to the hospital. The siblings then wait for an update on the twin boy's health status. Later, Corrine visits her children and apathetically breaks the news that their little brother had died from pneumonia, despite the doctor's attempt to save him. And to maintain their secrecy, there's no funeral service given to the twin boy, who's hastily buried near the manor. Outside, the housekeeper strangely digs not one, but four graves. Meanwhile, the pet mouse dies from eating the powder-sugared cookie the twin boy left behind. Chris then discovers something sinister. 
He shares with Kathy that their little brother and his pet mouse died from arsenic poisoning, mixed in the powdered sugar cookies they have been eating for months. Since they learn that they're no longer safe in the manor and assume it's their grandma's doing, Chris sneaks out again that night to steal jewelry so they can have money once they get out. However, he catches his mother lovingly spending time with the lawyer and learns their wedding is scheduled tomorrow. He recounts to Kathy what he saw. So they plan to wear fancy clothes to blend with the guests and then escape through the front door during the wedding. The following day, the truth prevails. All this time, it's Corrine who's coating the cookies with poison powdered sugar. The grandma then delivers the meal to the children, but unexpectedly finds their bedroom empty. Suddenly, Chris smacks the grandma's head with a bedpost, rendering her unconscious. Chris wants to beat up the grandma, but Kathy stops him. They're about to escape, but Kathy determinedly doesn't want their mother to inherit the riches after all the transgressions she did to them, so she convinces Chris to tell the truth to their grandfather. However, they see their grandfather is no longer alive due to the dismantled bed. Then they read from the late grandfather's two-month-old written will that their mother will still be disinherited once the people find out she conceived children from her first marriage. Apparently, their mother never intended for the children to leave the attic in order to secure her inheritance. The movie ends with the three siblings crashing their mother's wedding with the lawyer. They expose to everyone that they're her children, but Corrine shamelessly disowns them. Then they harshly rebuke their mother for holding them captive in the attic, for murdering her own child by feeding them poison cookies, and for attempting to eliminate them to secure her wealth. Chris represents the grandfather's will and the dead pet mouse as evidence to strengthen their accusation, but Corrine denies all of them. So Kathy tries to shove the poison cookie into her mother until they reach the balcony. Fortunately, Corey never gets the inheritance as she falls off the balcony and dies after being hanged by her own veil. Afterward, the children forever leave the mansion, never wanting to return. Then an older Kathy narrates that they survived on their own because she's dancing again while Chris became a doctor. She also wonders if their grandma is still alive, who's waiting for their return. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.